You know, normally when I'm trying to figure out who influenced me, I say Leonard Bernstein, George Gershwin, Igor Stravinsky, and Victor Borga. But if I wanted to reflect on this, which I have recently, I really think it was my father because I'm a lot more like him than I am like any of the other guys. Oh, I'm a little bit like Victor Borga, I have to admit. But uh, he, my father had a, a very intense relationship with literature, with Shakespeare, with um, serious music, just as a listener. But he had a great voice, he danced, he went on stage and acted, he loved to speak publicly. And it occurred to me much later that I go on stage and the kids' concerts and act, you know, I do a lot of public speaking, I'm very involved with theater, and the, it's the multifaceted sense that you have to try everything that I grew up with and thought it was normal. So I think actually, rather than name lots of famous people, I, I would say that I, my father, Jules Adolf, is by far the biggest influence. Well, when I'm not composing, uh, and I guess, and I'm not working, let's put it that way, because I also am writing a book and I'm frequently doing something like that. When I'm not doing that, it's pretty clear if it's the morning, I will be doing yoga. If it's later, I will be grocery shopping, <laughs> because I, we buy just a huge amount of food in our house and cook all the time. And the rest of the time, I might be cooking. My wife and I are big cooks, and we cook meals with lots of guests frequently, and then it's... Uh, continues into the next day. There's just a huge amount of cooking. So I would say yoga, cooking, reading, and other projects that are not music-based. The most recent novel that I can recommend is, uh, I, I loved this very dark comedy uh, that's as scary as it is funny, which is called Super Sad True Love Story by Gary Steingart. It takes place just a little bit in the future, and he nails a lot of the problems that we have now by just blowing them up a little bit to the point where it's extremely funny and terrifying. Uh, I also, in terms of non-novels, uh, um, recently I read uh, Glenn Watkins' book, Jeswaldo Hex, which led to my wanting to put together the Jeswaldo concert, which I had been thinking about for years, but that book and knowing Glenn, who, uh, is the great Jeswaldo scholar. Um, that book really fired my imagination and helped, helped do that. And then I've been reading poetry by Ruth Fainlight, who was born in uh, New York City but has been living in London for many years. And I became th uh, in very involved with her poetry, and now we're writing an opera together. She was recommended to me by somebody. And I just think she's a, um, a fabulous writer, not so well known in America, but very famous in England, actually. Ruth Fainlight. I'm a New Yorker, so I have many destinations that I love, but one thing I feel absolutely I have to do every year is Shakespeare in the Park. Because it's in the park, and because it's Shakespeare, I wait on the line. I just love it. I get up early with, with my wife Maria, my daughter Katya, we, we camp out, we meet people, and sometimes we do it more than once. We'll see both productions more than once even, and I just love doing that. So, I recommend Shakespeare in the Park. I find there are New Yorkers who've never done it, or who are afraid of the line. It's a great New York experience.